everyone, welcome to my very messy desk. Today I'm going to talk about designing a costume. This isn't going to be an abstract costume design, this is actually going to be me going through the process of working out what I'm going to wear and what I'm going to make for a game that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Normally I'd recommend starting this earlier than that. It's a grand tradition in LARP that you don't actually start making your kit until several weeks after you think you probably should have. Sewing always takes longer than you think it's going to, and just in general, plan ahead. I have actually been thinking about this game for a while, so it's not taking me by surprise. This is very much going to be a demonstration of the things that I've been thinking about and kind of gently percolating for a while. I spend a lot more time thinking about the costume than I do drawing it out, and I expect the actual build to be pretty quick. The one thing that I want to talk about before I really get going is the fact that I don't normally draw out my costume plans. I am 100% doing this for your benefit and not mine. Under normal circumstances, I would just hold it in my head. I'm not a very good artist and I'm generally find that this is not a useful part of the process for me because I'm a very iterative designer so I'll come up with things as I'm in the process of making it rather than producing a sketch and then trying to stick to that. But I, um, I never have to work with anyone else, I just do my own thing and so that works. Also I think it's nice to see that, you know, not every costume designer in the world is a great artist. I am most definitely not that. You don't need to be able to draw in order to make beautiful kit. I decided that I wanted to make a coat. This coat is going to be very simply shaped. It's going to have long sleeves, probably a sort of wrap under, over front with some closures here. Those might be ties or they might be straps. It's going to depend how much time I have and what I think looks good. I'm not sure about the collar just yet, so I'm going to leave that as plain. I may add an, a collar on when I make it. This is early technology level, uh, which means that I've ruled out modern costume patterns. There's lots of really great costume patterns I could use for this, but personally I get kind of hung up on the modern construction methods in them, they're very obvious to me personally. When something is focused so much on how primitive the technology is, it feels weird for me to then make something that has princess seams or very elaborate shaping. I think it's fair to say that literally nobody else other than me would ever notice this, but since I'm making this costume for me, I feel like it would affect my immersion personally if I thought that this costume didn't accurately reflect the character, their abilities, the sk their skills, and the world that they lived in. Since I am making my own kit, the only person I need to make happy is me. Which isn't to say that I'm going, you know, historically accurate in this, because I 100% am not. I do also just really enjoy drafting, and it's going to be nice to put together a pattern from scratch. The kind of key points of the shape that I'm going for is a high waist and then a very full skirt. Having just said that I didn't want to use modern patterns because of the construction methods, I've then gone and immediately added in this very full skirt, which is not accurate to this technology level at all. I think I'm going to cut this as a circle skirt, so it will be this kind of a shape. So two of those will form the two halves, this will be the centre back, this will be the front. This in and of itself is a modern construction method, but when I say modern I mean 14th or 15th century. This is how hoopalanders are made. It's not too late because of the technique, it's too late because it's a very wasteful use of the fabric. It wouldn't make sense in this period to spend all that time and energy weaving fabric on very primitive equipment and then to cut the circle shape out of it, which leaves you with a lot of waste fabric that isn't automatically useful in that garment. But I'm doing it anyway because 
I want that shape and I want quite a high waist on this, I think, as well. You will notice that I am starting with the outermost layer of this costume. And there is one very good reason for that, which is that it's an outdoor game. It's at a scout camp. I'm expecting that I'm going to be spending most of my time outdoors. The outermost kind of warm layer is going to be what most people see most of the time. In general, this is what I recommend you do, is you design your costume from the outside in. This is the outermost layer. It's going to be the most iconic. I'm making it as eye-catching as I possibly can. This character is a crafter. They're a sewist and a weaver and a dyer. Because this also rela relates to their religion, so which god they follow, it's very, very important. So I wanted to literally be able to kind of wear that on my sleeve. I want people to look at this character and immediately go, yes, okay, I understand what you're about. So I'm going to make it patchwork. I've been thinking about this and I think the way that I want to do it is to make flat pieces out of a base fabric. Very, very simple construction. So the, the big circle for the skirts, I'm not going to dart the bodice, not going to be any shaping in there. The high waist is actually really going to help me with that because I tend not to need a lot of bust shaping, but I do normally need a flare for the hips. Having that high waist cut means that I don't really have to worry about that. While I've been sort of mulling this costume over in my mind, I've been thinking a lot about colour scheme. The brief really talks about how autumnal this is supposed to feel. Not only is the game actually happening in autumn, it's about the autumn of a culture. The overall colour palette should be kind of subdued. I am, depending on what I've got in my fabric stash, planning on putting some slightly out of place colours and patterns in here. So things that are just going to look a little bit off. So some blue, some black and white. I've got some scraps of figured silk brocade, which I'm going to use very minimally just to give that patchwork coat a little bit of an edge to it. Now that I've got the outer layer pretty much planned out, obviously it will have a second sleeve. If I'm really going to draw something out, I tend to only draw half of it anyway. This is way more elaborate than I normally do. I'm going to think a bit about what's going to go under that. What I think I want to do as a base layer is a 12 panel coat. I've made one of these before. This is the side view. So this is the arm, the shoulders coming up there. This is the front and this is the back. What you have is a series of shaped panels. And you have, I think, four on each side, centre front and centre back, and then you'll have a central gore at the front and back. So you get this enormous skirt. I'm probably only going to make this to like knee length. So this is a very, very old construction method. What you basically do is get the fabric, you do one, central section you put a neck hole in the middle of that and that's your front and back and then of the remaining fabric you divide it up into panels and you split those panels in half and then you line them up bias side to straight side straight side to bias side and you kind of loosely pin them together and then you put it on and you fit it on the body so if you need any shaping in the chest or in the back, these come in here. Um, you take a lot of the width out of these narrow panels and keep as much as possible in the lower half. So that gives you the fullness in the skirt. This construction method actually comes from historical finds. So there's a graveyard in Iceland where they have I'm hazy on the exact date range, but Vikings, it's, it's Viking burials and because of the tundra, uh, the clothes have been really, really well preserved and this is where we found garments with this construction method. It feels very rich and luxurious while also being very, very historical and I think that works really well for this character because they are someone who can make their own clothes and believes that 
clothes should be beautiful and important, I really like this as a design to take into it. I'm probably gonna give it a nice high collar, maybe something that scoops down and closes in the front. I think that would be a really, really good base layer. The only other thing that I might add in, and I'm running out of space, so I'm probably not going to actually draw this in. This is a book that I use for inspiration more than I actually use to get the patterns out of. It's got a nice selection of stuff, but I'll, I will be honest in that I mainly use Society for Creative Anachronism resources online, which are excellent over the patterns that are in this book. But I've been looking at um, these kind of basic fitted medieval dresses, 14th century kirtles or whatever you want to call them. Morgan Donner has a really, really good video about how to draft one of these. And she's actually made one that is short. It only comes to about thigh length with shorter sleeves uh, with very elaborate dagged edges. And if I can find a uh, patterned wool or something like that in my stash that I think will suit this character well, I think that would work really, really well as like a warm flare to go over this fitted gown and under the coat. So there's something a little bit rich and special sort of sandwiched in between that's also gonna keep my torso really, really warm. So having put those ideas down on paper, the next thing for me to do is to go through my fabric stash and see what I can find to actually make it out of. I'm going to need something quite wet, lightweight for this, uh, a wool and a lining for the short kirtle, and then as many different scraps of fabric as I can find for this coat, as well as a base layer and probably a lining as well, I'll be honest. But that, I think, will have to be in another video. Stay tuned for a little bit more.